Right, in this lab, what our goal is is to determine whether what we see is a physical or a chemical change. All right, we're gonna do lab uh, 3-1. The first part of the procedure says to add three to four milliliters of silver nitrate. When something says three to four, that's just approximate. So I know that's about this much. This is the silver nitrate. Um, it reacts with light oftentimes and will also stain your skin if you get it on it. The bottles can stain silver, but you can see it's a clear liquid. All right, then I'm gonna add uh, the same three to four milliliters of sodium chloride solution. So what that means is there's salt, sodium chloride dissolved in the water. So once again, three to four milliliters. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mix them together. So I'm gonna pour them together. And it is now from two clear liquids to a nice white opaque. The next step it has for me to do is to filter it. So I need to create a filter funnel. So I've got a funnel here and I'll need a piece of filter paper. Um, when we fold the filter paper, we fold it in half, then in half again. So you got a fourth of a circle. And then you pull three of the four sheets of paper. You can see how there's one, two, three, four papers. We pull three of them off to the side. That makes a nice little cone. Um, the other thing we will sometimes do is we'll wet the, wet the paper a little bit so get it to stick. So I threw a little water in there and that helps the paper stick. Now I like to use a super cheap filtering apparatus where I just put my funnel in an Erlenmeyer flask, the triangular shaped flask. And now we're gonna filter this liquid. We'll pour it in there. There's a little bit of leftover residue. So what we can do is we can use distilled water, purified water, squirt it in there and get it to pop out. And now we're gonna filter it. I'll slide it a little closer. You can see that the liquid dripping down is clear. All right, we're gonna take a look at our uh, filter paper. The liquid is clear at the bottom. If I pull out the filter paper, what we see is a nice white solid in there. So it filtered out the white solid, leaving behind the liquid. Now we're gonna walk this over to our fume hood. And we're gonna place it right here in the light. And then we'll come back and check after a little while. Filter paper that was by the light. Um, see if I'll move it around, see if you can see it. It's got a little bit of a lavender tinge to it now. It's not that pure white anymore. Um, the light has caused it to change to a more lavender color. We'll move it over one more time in the dark so hopefully you can see the slightly lavender color and that's why it's a little hard to see in the video. Next experiment, we're going to place a pea-sized sample of sand and a pea-sized sample of salt into an aluminum dish. Kind of mix it together. Um, you can look in there and see the salt and the sand uh, separately. All right, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that, I'm going to dump it into a beaker here. We'll get that pan back for later. Screw the caps on these so I don't make any messes. That one goes on this one. This one's got sand in it, you can tell. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some distilled water to this. Distilled water is just purified water. I'm gonna grab my glass stirring rod. Stir it up real nice. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna decant the liquid. So I'm gonna pour off the liquid into this aluminum evaporating dish. And then I'm gonna rinse it uh, one more time. Pour off the liquid again, and then we'll uh, dump the sand the best I can. Mixture back in there. All 
All right, and then we are going to heat them with a Bunsen burner now. Get the matches, get the Bunsen burner lit. First one I'll try is the salt or the water we poured out. This one will probably take a little bit more time. Let's see how we can do it. See it's starting to boil. Watch it, it might start popping out of there a little bit. And you can see what's happening. It may look familiar like this stuff from earlier. All right, and then our next one, we've got the sand and water. This will go a lot quicker because there's not nearly as much water. And you can see uh, both of them together now. So what's left in this one, what's left in this one. All right, now we're gonna take a nichrome wire. Uh, it has an aluminum handle and a very thin uh, wire right here. You can take a look at the wire. And we're gonna heat it in a Bunsen burner flame. So I'm gonna go ahead and light my Bunsen burner flame. I'm gonna turn the gas on, take a match, and you light it right at the base. Like that, get a nice flame. And we just set those matches on our fireproof table. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this in the flame for about 10 minutes, or not 10 minutes, uh, a minute or so. See it's glowing nice and white hot, or red hot. Heating it up. And heat it off. That's probably good. And we'll look at the wire again after we're done. And perfect. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're going to take a piece of magnesium ribbon and place it in the Bunsen burner. And again, we'll light our Bunsen burner. We're using tongs here so I uh, remain safe. And I'm going to ignite it, then I'll pull it a little bit out of the flame and just hold it right here for you to see. All right, you come take a look at what is going on. Look at some of the properties of it. We got a little bit of magnesium left. We should probably uh, show it to you one more time. So that was magnesium in a Bunsen burner. All right, for our next experiment, we're gonna take hydrochloric acid. It's a clear liquid. We're gonna place about three or four milliliters in the test tube. Uh, and then we're going to add some magnesium turning. So what we've seen get burnt before, the magnesium, we're going to add it. But first it wants uh, us to take the temperature of it. 
So I've got a temperature probe hooked right up to there. You can see it's about uh, 24.9. I'm gonna add some magnesium turnings. So magnesium turnings look like glitter, a little bit like glitter. So I'll add a few of those. And you can see some bubbling occurring. I'm gonna throw the thermometer in there. You can see the temperature is going up, 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 up. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my thumb over the top um, and trap some of the gas that it's burning. I'm gonna take a wood splint, light it on fire, and if you didn't hear that, there's a little explosion there. Try it again. Let the pressure build up and watch for a little flame. Flame. So in that case, we have a little explosion happening from the gas that's being given off. The test tube's getting quite warm right now. I'll try for one more. That was magnesium and hydrochloric acid. Right, for this next one, we're gonna make Alka-Seltzer and drop it in some water. So I've got an Alka-Seltzer tablet, and I'm gonna get some water right out of the sink. About that much is probably appropriate. I'm gonna set it right there. We're gonna drop the Alka Seltzer tablet in there. Got some bubbling and fizzing. Uh, just like the previous one, uh, we're gonna check for the gas with a burning wood splint. You'll notice that the burning wood splint goes out as I approach the top level. All right, now we're gonna take salt, sodium chloride, and use a scupula, this is a scupula, and we're gonna use a little mini test tube, a little baby test tube like this, and a test tube clamp, and we're gonna scoop in about a pea-sized sample of salt into the test tube, and then we're gonna roast it in the Bunsen burner. That looks perfect. I'll place it right in the Bunsen burner. Move it around a little bit as you're heating glass, just so the glass doesn't crack as it warms up. You can see it's getting nice and hot with the orangish flame coming from it. Kind of like when the uh, nichrome wire was in the fire. We'll pull it out, and we still have a nice solid white salt. You can even dump it right on the table. Still looks just like salt. All right, now we're going to do the same thing with sugar or sucrose, C12H22O11 for the chemical formula. We're going to place a pea-sized sample into another mini test tube. And we're going to roast it in the Bunsen burner. So once again, nice white solid. Move it around a little bit to warm it up. So we're getting a slightly different result out of the sugar than we did with salt. Let's give it a little bit more. So once again, that was sugar. Let's try and dump the sugar out like we did with salt. And 